sounds terrible. Let's try that again. What in the world? Howdy friends, thanks for joining me in the shop today. Well, it's almost concert season, and so we're going to time to continue on our trip with the French Horn Connection. We're going to talk about some things that have happened a lot this week. Let's go. Okay, first off, double French Horn, supposed to be pitched in F, B flat, correct? All right, can you tell me anything about this? This happens a lot this time of year, so no worries if you can't. Talk to me about it. What do you see? When all of a sudden that the instrument doesn't play right, nine times out of ten, what we find is that the slides are in the wrong spot. Let's take our mouthpiece out so we don't lose it. Okay? So we want to check all the tuning slides. All right, now we've got this. All right, this is first slide. This is in the right spot. That's second slide. This is not in the right spot. I'll tell you what. Let's take these out. Okay. Friends, let's just start over. One, two, three. FB flat rotor. The F side. It's an easy way to remember this. The F side of the horn is the long side. The B flat side is the short side. Okay? Now, with that in mind, let's start with the number two slide. So that's these two. Okay? So we have a long one and we have a short one. The short one is actually going to go on the bottom. The long one goes on to the top. Let's do the number three slide. So we have, this would be considered the short. And this would be considered the long. Friends, another thing to remember is that the curly cues are always the number three slide. Always. So, this being shorter, we're going to drop this one in. And then we'll drop this one in. On the F slide, sometimes it's a small loop. Sometimes it's nothing more than a straight. The loop will be the, the small loop will be the B flat side. The long loop will be the F side. Friends always give a little bit of a shimmy when you put in or if you have to put new grease on. Okay? Now, these slides are in more proper alignment. Let's try our scale again. There you go. That's easy enough. Now let's check out a couple of other things here. This rotor won't, this rotor won't move. Friends, when horn's been setting up for a long time, quite possibly the rotors will not move. They will be frozen. And we'll be stuck. I'm going to put a picture in here and show you what this rotor is going to look like. I know what it's going to look like when I take it out. I know why it's frozen. I've seen a whole bunch of these over my career. Okay? So, when there's a couple of things that you can try to do before you bring it in to the repair shop. First thing is remove the rotor cap. Remember our last lesson we talked about mission marks. Okay? So... Here on the mission marks, we're going to take a heavier spindle oil and we're going to drop over those. I coat the entire surface. It's not going to hurt anything. On the back, here at the bearing plate, so this is the stop arm, onto that bearing spindle. And we're going to want to put some oil right in on there. Okay. So we've got some 
in there along that line. Now, we need to get some, remember how our, it was shaped like a C? Either side, right? Our rotor was shaped like a C. So if we just put oil, if we just dump oil through this when it's already in an open position, that oil is just going to bypass it and continue to go. So we need it to the rotor to kind of be turned slightly so that it will pick up on the face surfaces. So to do that, we're going to reach up and we're going to lightly tap the, the back of the spindle to see if we can loosen up some corrosion. Notice that that was enough to get it to let off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the F slide. I'm going to take my rotor oil. I'm going to depress about halfway so that it coats the surface. And then I'm going to work that rotor back and forth like this. Now friends, this is not going to be a permanent solve for this. This will get you by in the short term. The rotors actually really need to be clean. The instrument probably needs a chem flush. But time is tight sometimes and we have to do what we have to do. Also note that I only used a rawhide mallet. Um, I did not use any kind of a metal hammer or anything like that because it will mar the finish. This rotor is working pretty good for now. I want to go ahead. Number, number one and number two are okay, but they're not great. So while we're doing this French horn, let's just go ahead and knock these out. So we're going to put some spindle oil over the top. This is a heavier uh, oil. You would be considered a bearing and linkage oil if you're buying it commercially. Um, it's a heavier duty oil. Now, did you hear that? I had a little bit of a problem putting that rotor cap. It didn't want to drop back on there. So here's a little tip. Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Got that one. When you're looking to get the thread started, actually turn left. And hear the click. And when you hear the click, you know it's time to go right. And that you're not cross-threading on there. I want to go ahead and do this number three as well because number three is stuck also. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. We're going to flip over and put some on these backs as well. So we did number one. I want some of that right there on number two and right there on number three. So we have number one and number two working well. Number three still not wanting to cooperate. Okay. Now typically, you can kind of break that loose with your finger. We don't want to use any kind of pliers or anything that's going to cause harm to this instrument. Okay, now that we have this kind of rolling, what we're going to do is I'm going to specifically hold this one at about halfway and I'm going to squirt valve oil down. Because I want valve oil to penetrate the whole rotor, I want it to completely coat the face. You see how it still wants to hang up sometimes. I can actually feel the grit and grime in there. But we can get this to where it's going to 
want to go for us at least temporarily. Maybe we've got this audition we have to get to or just another day in band and just can't get to the shop today. So we got that going. All right. Now, I'm going to show you another way to oil the faces. Remember the our faces here, right? So we want oil to coat all of the surfaces. Another way to accomplish this is to clean off the crud that's built up right in here. and put some oil down in the slide. I like to hold it up and put it in. And then as I flip it over, I want to blow it through and I want to coat all of the sides of these rotors. Now friends, this technique will help you get through your rehearsal, especially if you haven't pulled the horns out since last concert season. We've been focused on marching band and whatnot, but it's that time where we have to start thinking about this. And you'll, you'll get through your rehearsal today, um, and then, you know, they're probably going to require a trip to the shop. One last note. Notice I didn't use any pliers. I used my fingers. I used the rawhide mallet to... To strike lightly. As always, we're not trying to create giant dead blow hammer situations. What we're trying to do is to just knock the brass and get things to move and then try to move corrosion out of the way. Now, I'm going to add something else as well. Hold on just a minute. Now, friends, this is another technique that I've seen done. Uh, in emergency emergencies remember this is our penetrating oil and so what we would want to do is come down about halfway down that face and that way and work that yeah see there almost immediately that that penetrating oil is going to start breaking through the crud that's on the inside okay it still may want to stick a little bit but as time goes on it is going to loosen up some so for some severely severely frozen items that might be a trick just one to put in the want to put in the noggin to hold on to. Um, the only true repair for this is to have it chemically cleaned, either ultrasonic cleaning or traditional um, chem bath. But that's what it is. It's the, it's the green calcium deposits, lime deposits, all that kind of stuff. It happens with playing. It's, it's you know, on every school-owned instrument. Um, because of maybe where the time lies of what your band class is. I know when I was in uh, school all those many years ago, fourth period was the longest period, so that's when band was, and that's when lunch was. So there were four or five blocks of lunch, and we had rehearsal except for the one that we were eating, and we took a break, ate, came back, and immediately went back to playing. So it's... You know, it's it's something that's always been there with all of the new horns and all of the tolerances as tight as they are now. Uh, chem flushing is just a way of life. The parts have to be clean. They have to be oiled. Um, there's just more maintenance on them. Uh, things rot out faster, uh, that sort of thing. This is something that uh, in in the spring when you're done for the year, if you're not issuing out French horns to be played over the summer, then doing this before you put them away 
um, is the way to go for sure. Uh, if you're sending to your repair tech for summer maintenance, then they're going to come back oiled and you should be good to go there. A rawhide mallet, penetrating oil, uh, bearing oil, which is a heavier oil, and then some rotor oil. Uh, I use lanolin on my slides and that's it. Okay. Until next time, you're good to go. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching, everybody.